Back to another video where I cast your StarCraft 2 replays. This replay was sent to me by a user on my Discord server. I think this is a... I honestly don't know what level this game this is, but I think it's some that number below. Somewhere around that level, and it's a ladder game on Hardware Ladder Edition. If you want me to cast your replay, please read the video description. So, looks like we got the Red Terran player in the bottom left hand corner of the map. It is representing Clan Solarite. It is Ash. In the top right hand corner of the map, we have the Blue Protoss player. Holy man. Well, the person who sent this replay to me, the, the title of the replay is WTF, and they, they commented about it saying that they felt like someone shoved a wet noodle in their brain and jiggled it around after this game. So we should, I suppose, we should see some rather mind-bending things in this game. I think that's the takeaway. Man, that's a really fast. What? Is, okay, first of all, this is. Okay, I'm. That's where PVT was, man. People, people have the weirdest like ideas about how to wall off in PVT. Like in PVZ, you obviously wall like you generally wall the low ground. Sometimes you wall the high ground if you're doing a cannon rush and then you put a cannon behind it. In PVP, you the two gates here. And then you could do the pylon or the, you know, the battery wall off here against the depths. But both of those matchups have what I feel like are pretty uh, agreed upon standard wall off. But for PVT, I swear nobody has any clue. Like some, some people wall off here, some people wall off the Reaper ledge, or they attempt to wall off the Reaper ledge, I should say, and then they just don't know how to do it properly, so the Reaper gets in anyway and they waste a bunch of money giving away their tech while also giving their opponent a free tech scout and having to put the tech next to that pylon. That pylon was also super early, did definitely didn't need to be there, and the expansion is late. But, probably will continue on. It's going to be a factory and a barracks, so possibly reactor hellions. We are- I'm sorry, did we pull off gas? We- okay, I know- we definitely mined enough gas for- we produce. A I'm sorry. Do we produce any units? What are we making? Okay, um, we mined enough gas for the factory, and then we barely mined any more than that. I'm sorry. What is this? If we, we got factory reactor, and now we have 100 gas. That makes 250 gas mined. We did not get a reaper. Okay, so now we're just proxy, proxy gate battery. Not proxying anything, we're just two gate PVT and rallying units across the map, and we're dying because we don't have a Reaper. Yeah, this is. I mean, I, I remember there was a phase in both pro and amateur PvP where everyone for a time was just like, Reaper is a useless unit in this matchup, so they just stopped making Reapers. Uh, but I'm telling you, if against stuff like this, uh, Reaper kind of a good unit. Like Reapers are really good early defensive unit. And a scout. So people who say that they're not who so people who say that they won't pick Reapers because they don't have to control them. It's because it's just a bad unit that gets nothing done. I'm telling you, like there's 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 a lot you can get done with the Reaper, even if you don't even even if you just right click it around places and try not to lose it battery went up, I guess we didn't cancel it, but Adept's just practically waiting to go in. This is mech. We got two factories here. Looks like mech. And we also, um, two Hellions alone are definitely n no indicator on their own if this is mech after all. I believe that there are definitely some Hellion openers in this matchup that go into bio. Okay, so I don't... Okay, so I checked my Discord server. I don't know what the league, the MMR of this game is. I'll probably check after. I can check after uh, this game is through, but I have no idea what, what league this is. Two stalkers are over here with the, with the one battery that has had plenty of time to get uh, two battery energy. I think this might actually be a bit of a. Okay, this is actually it feels like a somewhat threatening poke. 
I would have to say two stop with this definitely enough to take, make quick work of these units. I would not be getting I mean I wouldn't be getting a cyclone, honestly, I'd be getting a tank. Cycle. One tank on the high ground here just denies all of this. Okay, okay, we're we're on 27 SCV economy and we're attempting to pump units off of three factories. Okay, and meanwhile we're committing holding this position with another shield battery in a photon camp. Okay. But funny enough, um Okay, that's charge. I'm sorry, you're charge DT. The forge, and we also have three gates on we're less economy than the Terran player has, and we're also gonna lose the cyclone. Okay. okay. So we're making cyclones and we keep losing them. Moral of the story, build siege tanks if your control is bad. Like that? I'm telling you. If you're if you're if you're bad at unit control, just make siege tanks. Seriously. I swear you would I swear, it is practically impossible to not get value out of a siege tank. You see it you siege it in a reasonably defensible position like a ledge or someone like back here. Another 3DTs and there is no detection whatsoever. Okay, no never I like. Okay, we do have detection. We should be hiding. But I guess if they're just losing hiding it doesn't matter that much. Hellions can't fight stock because Hellions are terrible at fighting stalkers anyway. Actually, I guess suppose you need the Hellions to meet shield. Draw aggro from the stalkers so you don't take psych damage on the cyclone. Okay. Mm -hmm. You this is why you use spotting you spotting units for your cyclones so you don't need to personally get damage because these the cyclones are the are what are making you this entire army actually work. And the second that like, you just start taking damage on them for three, you lose the game. Only man's are surprisingly committed to this. Actually, I mean, I would say that but both of these guys are both these players are floating so much money that I feel like neither of them is actually committed to this. Only man is kind of screwed though if this doesn't kill. Because he's behind on. He's, he's behind on economy. I guess the economy has been someone messed up by the fact that- I'm sorry, did we just drop a- we dropped a supply depot. We dropped a supply de- an extra supply depot while there's a DT in our base. And this, this and the friendly fire splash isn't even gonna kill it. Oh my god. Oh my... Each type is- we, we do have- we do now have a siege tank. I'm, I'm glad to announce. Finally looked at, uh, okay, we're gonna scan right before the little mines are even able to activate. Thank goodness, all the, all the DTs are finally dead. I mean, there, there could have been much cleaner execution of holy mans, and there could have been much cleaner defense from Ash, but at the end of the day, uh, Ash should have more than enough to break this container. Oh, not, not the good of my friendly power. Okay, all the zealots die. Now hopefully, a cool micro tip, if you, if you, if you Q, if you click lock on and then shift Q a, ret a move command backwards, you will not take the cannon shot when you lock on the cannon. Just, just some, just some micro tips. Uh, yours truly, the micro tryhard. This isn't even good at micro. I can see that. Okay. So holy man's gonna t do what the Protoss player should obviously do in this situation if they want to come back in the game, is they take a proxy base. They, they take a ninja base in the corner of the map and hope their opponent never finds it. Amazing decision, and also... Which is sort of neglected to build SCVs this entire time. 
What did you just lose? God, you lost so many. It's actually a little bit disgusting. Finally breaking out, but uh... The question is, is... It's actually, now that Ash is broken out of this, are they actually going to be able to capitalize on the advantage? The momentary advantage that they create. Actually, I wouldn't even call this an advantage. You have, like, the weirdest... I mean... You have the weirdest hybrid mech composition against someone with charged zealots. And if you're going to turn your... If you're going to turn your Hellions into help at then none of the units you have particularly good offensively against charge lifts. Rallying disruptors across the map. Liberator is here. I guess we can find a neat siege location right there. This tower is up. Yeah, this is... You can't make... Like, charge... Tanks just don't work against charge lots so that's some sort of buffer between them. And even then, the tanks just don't do that much damage to charge lots. Protoss players, if you're struggling against mech, if you're, if you're struggling against siege tanks, just, just make just make charge lots and don't run into widow mines. Very, um, well, I'm sorry, I feel like I had a joke there, but apparently, it apparently wasn't funny enough to remember. Anyway, I guess we just keep setting disruptors here. This observer is still not. The detection this, this this observer is nowhere in detection range by the So uh we have turrets. We do have turrets, but none of them are quite close enough. We also got the ninja base which is finally making probes. It'd be uh I make wait, how the hell do we have fewer oh right, because this liberator got a crap ton of kills. And now holy man is very all in with this. I mean, we're gonna blow up some all that's for free. That's cool. These tanks will keep this most keep them mostly safe. The most painfully slow warp in a charge lots, but I guess it works. Oh yeah, no, that liberator's not gonna find any more damage. More charge lots. Honestly, honestly, just stop making siege tanks for this. Just make widow mines. And spread them out because hilariously inefficient for us to use disruptors to deal with one good of mine being spread out in every like two disruptor disruption nova radi radii. If you're gonna use disruption if dis disruptors to go one good of mine at a time, you're you're doing pretty terribly as a protest. I'm gonna just switch up uh, the loop will quite as much as I thought it would. Yeah, Holy Man's just lost this game. I, I guess. That was a weird. That was a really bad proxy. I guess this man sort of forgot that uh, the patch happened where shield batteries don't just start with full energy anymore. If that tells you anything about the sort of ladder player holding man is, if you run into the ladder you can give him a low for me and then you can express your own judgments about whether proxy battery strategies are legitimate or, as Pig might say, a bullshit cheese build. Okay, Liberator's gonna siege on that Nexus, I guess. The problem with having two Liberator sieges is that sometimes like, the way that they both target things is they both they both have a projectile and they both aggro up to things that are closest to them, which means if you siege them, two of them in the same location, they will shoot the same target, and if tar that target is probes, you will massively overkill it. Not to mention that sieging on it. Nexus without Libranger that is surrounded by cannons. Not the most effective use of your 150 minerals, I guess. 
Holy Master's dedication to using these DTs have been so somewhat impressive despite the fact that he lost them. Only eight of them actually expected it to have him to have lost more. But uh, yeah, Ash is just super far ahead. It barely even matters that the army composition is really jank. I don't- why are we producing single marines exactly? Also, why are, we're not making more production, we're not getting upgrades. We're searching the not researching bio upgrades of any sort. Okay, so Ash just finally has enough heli has enough metal to move out and kill things, I guess. Yeah, uh, I'm like not great against not great against the composition. See, I mean, sort of just have nothing to do with the take damage or the. uh... Hellions are sort of useless in this comp. Oh boy. Sorry, what happened there? So, the siege tanks got their shot off first. Ooh, disruptor, where are you? Where's the disruptor? The disruptor is supposed to lock into range here. And as soon as it does, it gets blasted twice. Okay, and then it just barely manages to get a shot off. And, oh my god, this is the worst time to unseach. Why would you unseach? I, I I guarantee if he if Ash did not unseach there, it would have wiped out like at least six of these. But now we're gonna lose the Liberator. We're also gonna possibly lose another man, yeah, there's a ton of tanks. As well as the position on the map that you had there. And now we are going to get run over by charged lots, which are great against sieged tanks, and which are even better against unseized tanks, as it turns out. Oh man. Ash, after barely um, getting the early game defense together, is seemingly losing every advantage that she had. We lost all the workers, and we're not dropping mules. Are you dropping mules? Oh, no, that's full energy. That's almost full energy. That's not even orbital, and that's hasn't dropped mules in a while. Blink is on the way for Holy Man's, who desperately gets some more efficient use out of what is clearly their second favorite unit after the BT, of course. I feel like a lot of players have this obsession with making stalkers, especially in this matchup because they get the idea that stalkers are good. I mean, stalkers are a great early game unit and they're sort of the uh, meat shield for certain types of mid game unit comps, but they fall off really hard and they're certainly no good without Blink. Do you need Blink? Like, Blink is the thing that makes them efficient at all. If you don't have Blink, then Stalkers just suck. And I also, also guarantee you, same, the people who are obsessed with making Stalkers are probably the same people who don't have the micro to get actually good use out of them. So, oh, especially not against a composition like this with so many Siege Tanks in the back. With, with you know, step up with. Not that, not that tanks really need that against siege. Not that uh, tanks really need that against stalkers because, like pure stalker, like this distance pure siege tank will dumpster pure stalker. Come on, there's like a siege. There's a siege position right there. Okay, so. 
when you're using mech, your, your siege tanks in, in TVP and in, in TVZ and TVP, if you're using mech moving your siege tanks up, you should, unless you are very certain of where your opponent's units are, you should generally take precautions like only sieging, unsieging some of your tanks at a time, and spreading them out so they don't get, so they don't easily friendly fire each other and see if they don't up down by splash damage so that it's generally just harder to engage or it's just generally harder to kill all the siege tanks at the same time and so we now we are leapfrogging tanks ward also this doesn't actually like this liberator should be forward I don't know if I dislike the slow bridger position, but it is what it is. Ash floating. Okay, I just realized Ash is floating 4k minerals. Dump it. Okay, are we making. I'm sorry, are we making a bio transition at 20 minutes into the game? Do we have stim and combat shields? We have stim. We don't have combat shields. Also, don't have Ghost Academy, but oh well. Oh, and this disruptor is going to get a fat shot off. Is either of these... Okay. Is either of these guys paying attention to the... Oh my, oh my god. You gotta be kidding me. Like, both both of these players just had, a, had like a, an army and a, 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 dis, a disruptor and an army very vulnerable to getting a tank a fat disruptor shot. And none of them and neither of them noticed each other for like... What's been five seconds now? Okay, 15, they just stood there for a solid 10 seconds, starting at like basically the 5 second mark, which is when they, the 55 second mark, which is when they both started standing still. Neither of them noticed each other for a full 10 seconds. Also, also can't siege your tanks like that. A great position would be to siege them here, actually, if they get in there, of course. I'm not sure that you can, but... Pretty far out of the way. You're, you can you can put your army in between the tanks and the enemy. Makes it a really good position for shelling the static defense here. And again with the unseaging the entire station line and then unseaging it again. I, mean, I don't really think it matters. Actually, it might for this because there's a lot of like, a lot of charge lots in this comp and. You, Marauders and tanks don't fight charge less well, but they know all the charge lots they have. They do no charge lots. No disruptors. No tanks. Okay, so in that particular situation, just leave the tanks up, they'll shoot at the stoppers. Get whatever damage they can because there's literally nothing you can accomplish by unseaging them. There's not much you can accomplish by unseizing them, and then... What are you gonna do, kill the zealots? Just, just take the stalker damage, I suppose. This game has gone on for almost 23 minutes, and it still doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. Because... Ash has had the... Ash has had the economy and the army advantage. Or should have had the army... The army supply... Definitely is the army supply advantage, but maybe not the best uh, in terms of upgrades and composition or control at that. And basically every time Ash moves across the map, Holy Man is just barely able to have enough defensive weapons to hold. So we might be sitting here we might be sitting here for quite a while longer. Did we scan this? I'm sorry. I thought, I thought we were making a beeline to this base. I was going to ask myself if Ash had some crazy intuition for hidden bases. Okay, finally we're going for the throat here and quite a long distance away from where the main army is, so... Either this turns, either Holy Man is gonna have to come back home, 
or this is going to turn to a base race. Based on the army comp right now, I don't know that I favor a base race for the enemy. Okay, never mind. We're just gonna go. Holy man is gonna go for the counter attack. Let's see if it turns into a full fetch base race or not. What is this? Okay, what is this just random? This is like a Terran. If this was a Terran bio player, this would be like their their wet dream. If they could just. This is so much army that can't get back into the main base, and you could just drop here for free. Also, unpower all of the gates at the same time. But, uh... Actually, there aren't any... There are no planetaries anywhere. Actually, I think... I think Ash is getting the upper hand here. Oh, are they? Actually, um... Oh, Holy Man's is losing a lot of supply, and they're also losing all of their tech. Queuing triple upgrades on the same porch. Very cute. Oh man. Don't repair. Don't. Why are you. Don't repair the tank. Just attack the zealot. Oh. Oh well. I guess this is. I guess this is an actual base race. What can I say? Oh, Holy Mantis, Holy Mantis, been behind this entire game, and they're probably gonna lose now, unless they get some miracle disruptor shots. Do me miracle, because you're gonna need to get by time for several disruptor shots to go up. And you're also gonna need Ash to make an atrocious, an atrocious move with these assistants, which is which is possible. I will not, I will not lie, it's just possible at this stage of the game. There's another disruptor shot ready, but you can't pop into them whenever these assistants are siege. So you need to buy time for. Okay, no, that's definitely not gonna be what you want. Not at all. Okay, only that is good. It's like, there's two DPs, what are you gonna do with two DPs? So uh, I guess I'm been sneaking around here for there's the unit's last tap and we'll sit around until the game is actually over probably. Okay, GG. I feel like Holy Man is someone we've had on the channel before. But the distinct I got the distinct impression that I know what that name is. Anyway, um, at 28 minutes, is the winner of this game. I mean, it was. I don't feel like it was ever really in. I don't think it was ever in doubt. Ash, Ash definitely had a pretty clear supply advantage the entire game. It just seemed like she had a really hard time capitalizing on it. And uh, yeah, eventually, like Holy Man's committed really hard. Both sides floating a lot of money. Holy Man's committing really hard to a. A rush that was basically already held and trying to force their way out of a bad situation which is which was probably not the right move considering how much money you were floating but uh i mean i guess at, i guess at the mmr where both sides are floating a thousand resources at seven minutes that sort of just decision making is really and reading the game state is sort of really hard to do but, uh, yeah pretty interesting uh 
by interesting, I mean highly questionable pylon into single proxy battery to try to pressure the Nexus. Which you would think it was a light pressure, but it there's a it's super dedicated behind because the Protoss has fewer probes in the Terran in the low twenties. And there's a DT shrine and charge being finished up at the same time, so uh yeah. Interesting stuff. Also, uh going back into Protoss. I mean I won't say it. I mean I used to I used to play a lot of mech into Protoss. But uh I mean yeah. At the end of the day, uh resources are lost surprisingly even for both sides. I think I'd buy that. Although Yeah, it is pretty even for both sides, despite the fact that I feel like Ash was definitely mining way more. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, yeah, um, if you're on YouTube, that's all for now. I'll see you another two days. If you are on Twitch, I will keep casting these until I get tired, I suppose. If you're on YouTube, uh, see you. In t thank you for watching. See you in two days. Good and goodbye.